Russ said he played in the Derby Classic in free fall. How about you? What, what's your experience in free fall? Yeah, I mean, I played my uh, freshman year at uh, Freedom Hall when we shut it down with the win against Syracuse. And I played in Freedom Hall when I came down here for uh, the Derby. So I have fond memories of Freedom Hall. It's a great gym, great place. I get to go down there and watch Bellman play. So it's, it's an amazing historic you know, arena. A lot of memories, a lot of good memories for Louisville. So it's going to be really cool to get out there and you know, play again. You played a lot of basketball. You won a national championship. That last game there, Cal goes crazy. And that, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like it. Is that atmosphere something that sticks with you? Man, that was probably one of the loudest I've ever you know, been a part of. You know, when we played Syracuse, they had ranked number one. We weren't playing really that well that year by our standards, and we knew that win would really solidify us and get us to the tournament. And when I tell you the fans came out and supported us, you know, they we got, we, I finally got a chance to, to experience a, a court storming. We stormed the court. I remember them lifting up Edgar Sosa. I remember, you know, Kyle Kirk going crazy. I remember going to the bus after the game with all the fans just cheering on the way to the bus after the game. It was just, you know, one of those memories that's going to last a lifetime. Other and, you know, really, that was kind of like the epitome for me of what Louisville is and how the fans the guys behind their team and, you know, what makes them so special. Hey, it's been a minute since you've played with some of these guys before. How much of this whole process is getting to know their games again? Oh, the whole time. I mean, <laughs> you know, everything's about getting to know everybody's game. But, you know, the good thing is I, I've watched a lot of these guys play, you know, throughout the years. I know to pass the rest on the wing and get out of his way because he's trying to go one on one. I know, uh, you know, Dylan's a shooter. Wayne, getting in the post, a little bigger now. Shane also, you know, and then the rest of the guys just figuring out, okay, what spots as a guard can I put them in? You know, I know my job. I know my role. I'm not picking up full court for everybody for the nostalgia. I might pick up once or twice, but my job is to set everybody up, knock down some shots, and try to get a win. Where are you playing now? I just finished in Australia. So I was there this past year um, in Illawarra, uh, injured my shoulder, came back home, and now I'm home now. Do you still ask Russ this question? Do you still have this, he called it PTSD? Do you hear Coach P stomping on the sidelines? Oh, man. Mine is different. Like, I wake up at night thinking I'm late for something, late for individuals. You know, so I, I rush up and run over to the gym. Like, so th that's my PTSD of uh, Coach P. But, you know, for all the times that, you know, he got on me and really butted heads a little bit. It's one of those things that I'll cherish for the rest of my life just because of the life lessons that he taught me. And I really think he's an amazing coach and an amazing person. So him yelling at me my freshman and sophomore year, it kind of died down a little bit in my junior and senior year. I think more so because I learned how to tune it out. <laughs> I learned how to listen to the message and not the tone. But he's an amazing coach, so I still have a little bit. And we, we joke about it all the time. Russ, Wayne, Shane, all of us, we joke about it. You know, our experience with Coach P about, I used to sit in the back of the film room, so I wouldn't have to hear him yell at me the whole time. He <laughs> did the good, bad, and the ugly. So it's uh, good times to me, reminisce. Hey, do you think you would have become a player that you did if it wasn't for him? Because you, know, you were the McDonald's All-American, but it didn't come right away. It took some time here before you kind of hit your stuff. I definitely think Coach Patino helped me become the player I am today. You know, just instilling little things. Uh, I was always a, a scorer in high school. I was very unselfish. Like, I, I love getting my teammates involved, but he really kind of taught me what it is to be a, really a true point guard. And, you know, my freshman year, I struggled a lot just learning how to run a team, learning how to get the, our, our defense sets, uh, learning how to, you know, get people the ball in the right position. So that, that took some time for me to get used to, but. You know, he really helped me sit down, break down film of, you know, we watched guys like Rondo, guys like Steve Nash, just, you know, really fast first, pass first point guards to get guys involved, learning how to keep my dribble alive, uh, you know, not jumping for all my passes. And, you know, I credit him a lot for my development and, you know, where I am today. The money in this thing is good. A lot of people focus on that. But for you guys, really what, when you, when you get down to it, why do you all want to play this? I, I want to win. 
you know, and that's that's a huge thing. Everybody wants to win, the competitor, and that's all. But for me, it's, it's more about the getting back in front of the fans, getting a chance to play in front of them again, because you never know, you know, when you'll get that chance again. Uh, you know, especially with Louisville not having any pro teams, it's, it's tough to a lot of the guys to come back and play. So this is a good chance and opportunity for me to get back in front of them, play in front of my family, you know, play in Europe and uh, Australia for the last couple of years. So it's a chance for them to get to see me live in person. But also, too, it's, it's something that's bringing basketball back to Louisville besides the, you know, our college team and you know, other ventures. But it's, it's good to help the city grow. Uh, and I, I think that's a, a big part. Coach B's back on the big stage now. Any, any doubt in your mind? He's no. Get it done in a big way. No, I, I've never had any doubt with Coach B. You know, I mean, he's been successful everywhere he's went. You know, when he went to Pompanacos, we were getting ready to play him, play him out there. I watched his team grow out there when he was at Iona, took him to the tournament, um, won their conference championship. You know, so he's always been a winner. He's, he knows how to coach. He's the reason why he's a Hall of Fame legendary coach that he is. And uh, I look forward to watching him. You know, I, I tell them that I always root for the coaches who coach me. So we have Keats, Joaquin, we have, you know, Coach P, Richard. You know, all those guys, if it's not Louisville, then I'll root for those guys. But other than that, I don't really watch a lot of other teams in that, in that sense. But for Coach Patino, he's always going to have a place in my heart where I'm always going to root for them. You know, there was a recruit the other day that came out that, uh, you know, it was Louisville has showed interest, but also St. John's. And, you know, I take those guys. It's like, if it wasn't Louisville, I'm happy with St. John's. Just because, you know, that's, that's my uh, my relationship with them and, you know, my, my love and loyalty to them. You know, Program. You, hey, you, hey, since you've been back, you kind of poured yourself into this community. I know you're going to basketball camp at the Yelp Center. I heard you mention the other day that you want to do a, a open run at, at times this, this summer. Where does that come from? Because you can come back, just kind of be with your family, do your thing. You're involved in the program as well, but you're kind of pouring yourself into this community. I've always had a passion for working with community, working with kids, just because how I grew up, I grew up in the Rolling Boys and Girls Club, and you know, it really helped shape who I am today. About this, you know, a lot of people have family issues, family problems, and one thing I can do to give back is, you know, do things like this. I had a camp last week where we had it here in this gym, which is going to be our future home where I'm taking over for, you know, Shoot 360 Mobile. And we had about 130 kids. We partnered with uh, David Levis and North Oldham kids. And then this week, I'm going down to the Yum Center to partner with Gordon Health and myself and my cop Robinson. We're going to put on a, a free camp for uh, you know, the youth down there. And it's about 140 kids a day, so two days, it's about 280 kids. And then, uh, you know, I'm just trying to get back into the community. Like you said, I, I'm doing some open runs, getting some open gyms put together. Uh, and that's going to lead into like my gym where I can have. You know, events where teenagers, you know, youth can get in here and have a place where it's positive that they can come. You know, instead of there's a lot of crime, a lot of things are going on in local. It's an opportunity that I grew up with that helps a lot of kids get off the street and that I saw firsthand. So why not do something like that here in local? Where crime rate is high, try to, you know, focus on our, our youth and our kids to hopefully deter them from going down that path and you know creating a positive place for them where they can come hoop sometimes uh, have an open gym be around some positive people yeah. hey when you talk about playing with Russ what do you miss the most about that dynamic that you're looking forward to getting back more so just the chemistry part I mean you guys talk to Russ he's just a ball of energy a high energy guy I love playing with him uh, on the court you know being around him he's just a very like, energy very infectious We've always messed well together just because of we're both high energy guys. And I'm just looking forward to getting out there, man. Just watching him. I'm, I'm a big fan of him. So just passing it to the wing and me just sprinting away to the corner and just watching him go to work. I, I'm looking forward to that. Have you worked out any of these new U of L players or, or watched them work out? I mean, do you have any kind of impression? That, I mean, it's kind of been top secret. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, to put a lot of, uh, you know, build a lot of hype around them. You know, because it's a bunch of new guys, and you know, we saw what happened last year. Um, unfortunately, you know, they, they only won a couple games. But you know, for these new guys, I would just say, 
you know, they're working very hard. They're living in the gym. Uh, hopefully they can continue to keep that same rhythm, that same uh, work ethic and routine leading into the season and also, you know, when timing is hard. Um, for me, I can't really, you know, judge them too much, you know, during preseason. On paper, they're very talented guys. Individually, characteristic-wise, they're very, you know, good people. But you really can't test somebody until they get into that season and get thrown into that fire. So, uh, you know, I'll kind of keep my expectations from them um, to myself. But I would just say that, you know, it's a great group of guys, characteristic-wise. I watched them. They work hard. You know, Kenny Payne does a great job of, you know, pushing them in practice. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, watching them during the season. You're talking about that drive to win. Does that bleed over to, okay, I need to scout some of these other teams in this event? And if so, is there any buzz about, okay, certain teams that might be one to look out for? Uh, that's tough, just yeah. because a lot of teams aren't really uh, announced their full rosters. And I will most likely scout them before we play them just to see, like, all right, this is who we play. You never want to look ahead. And I've learned that through college and through the pros. You never want to look, all right, who can we potentially play? Because in a tournament like this, it's a one-game elimination, so you always want to focus on the team ahead of you. So I've seen a lot of my friends uh, join different teams, so I know their games. And, you know, there's a lot of talent in the TBT this year. And I look forward to finally participating in it. And I'm excited to see who's coming to Louisville. You know, see some of my old friends that I played with in Europe or played against. And uh, can't wait.